Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Very Reasonable Pilots Podcast. I'm your host, Charles. Along with me, as always, is my co-host, editor, producer, co-pilot, and gunner, Jacob Gloth. How are you doing today, Jacob? Oh, I'm good. Okay, that's good. Are you good? I'm doing all right. It's a little sweaty, and I lost my keys today, but I'm going to go get some replacement keys very soon after we record, and it'll be, it'll be fine. I had some ramen for lunch. It was nice. What have you been up to? Very exciting. I'm good. I'm actually, um, the next, this is our last recording where we'll both be in the United States of America. Yeah. We'll I, gotta go, I gotta go to the UK for, for uh, school slash work. And then both of us will be out of the United States. Yep, at the same time. At the same time. Different parts of the same island, basically. Nope. Yes. Yes. I mean, it's, yeah. I guess. Yeah, it is. I, I mean, I know it is, but, you know, it's just a weird way to put it. Different parts of the same island. In a, in a way, that's that's really the human condition, isn't it? We're all just different parts of the same island. What's your pitch? Well, my pitch is about uh, 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 a young man, an older man, by the name of Maxwell Sinclair. And we're going to get into that. This show called it's Old Soul. Name. Yeah, Maxwell Sinclair. Uh, I, I, mean, I think it's a good name. You know? He's a guy who can have a ton of different nicknames. Sinner. Sinclair Sin. Eh. Uh, Max. Maximilian. Max. Well, Is there going to be a big reveal that he's actually Kane? Uh, no, I wish. Actually, shit, I have to change some things. <laughs> Kane. Sugar. Exclamation point, exclamation point. Do you need sugar? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I've got the diabetes. I got the sugar foot. You know? So I, don't I just know what need... you're talking about. Have diabetes? You, have you lost it like five minutes into this. I haven't lost anything. I'm talking about my pitch about Maxwell Sinclair, the old, the titular old soul. Does he have diabetes? Uh, I mean, he can. Because the whole idea of this show is that he is a man who's every time he dies his consciousness and his memories and his, you know, reality is transferred back in time to his younger self as a baby. Right? Oh. So, I know. almost did that for my other show. My, remember, um, the, uh, what is it, what did I call it? I don't know what I called it, but Niana was, Niana Muller was my scientist person, mm-hmm. and she constantly gets sent back in time, yeah. or whatever. Uh, I almost did that, what you're talking about. I almost had it where she got sent back to the day of her birth oh, every time. That would be... But I decided not to do that. Yeah, that sounds I like, like this idea, though. laborious. Well. Yeah, but, uh, well, then maybe you, got, you can add some some episode ideas. Because I, I only have the first season really plotted out. The first season is him between the ages of uh, zero and ten. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Maxwell Sinclair, he is... Basically, whoever he wants to be, because he comes out of the womb. He's why? Wait, why is why does he get sent back in time all the time? He has no idea. Okay, that's part of the thing. He's like, is it a Groundhog Day curse? Is it like some witch shit going on? Am I just? Is this hell? Is this what hell is? I don't know. But he's deciding to make the best of it. So yeah. the idea came to me for this show when I was like, man, I wish I could go back in time to when I was like a little kid in middle school or elementary school and just tell all the bullies in my schools like to fuck off like i could use adult logic and adult reasoning to mess with kids and that sounds fun if you're also a kid not if you're an adult yeah maxwell's found a loophole in that he gets sent back in time to the day of his birth every time he dies and it's not going to be really established how many times he's done this but he is at least a couple of hundred... His brain, his consciousness, is at least a couple of hundred years old. You know? So, like, two or three times, it sounds like. If it's yeah. only a couple hundred, you know? It's probably, yeah. like, four times max. Yeah, but... Uh, and each lifetime is radically different because he yeah. uses his knowledge from the previous lifetimes to help him, you know, make it better. But this one, this timeline, his new, you know, re birth into the you know stratosphere that he exists in this time he's deciding you know what 
I'm just gonna be a normal kid, you know? Last time I was like a super genius scientist guy who went to yeah. space and did all this shit. Now I just want to be like normal, you know? I just want to be like a yeah. troublemaker, Bart Simpson style, eat my shorts kind of dude. So he is a foul mouthed uh, toddler who is constantly getting oh, wait, his we're ass. We're starting him as a kid? He's a yes. kid in the show? Okay. Yes. The whole first season is between the ages of zero and 10. Yeah. Okay. So he, like, pops out. I, I would imagine the first episode starts with his mother giving birth. And, you know, we give it a year. Well, let's say it's like he's born in 2000. Just because ease of remembering. And he's, you know, he comes out. His mom's screaming. He's like, ah! That's the noise his birth What a description thing makes. of birth. He comes out. And he's like, what the Fuck. He's just like, what the fuck's going on here? Get your hands he's off. He's a baby. Don't... He can't yeah. speak. That's not how that works. Why not? It says who? Because they're babies. They don't know how to speak, but he knows how to speak. So the doctor goes to circumcise him, and he's like, fuck off, doc. Things as well involved. Well, he's a magic baby. You got to do some research in this. Like, you got to figure out if babies actually would be capable of speaking at birth. Because then you could have noise. some comedic things where he's like trying to speak, but he uh -huh. can't. Oh, okay, that would be good. Like, maybe, because it's like, I don't know how babies work, but maybe, like, they their vocal cords aren't developed or not enough or something, so he's, like, trying to speak, mm -hmm. but he can't And he's, articulate. like, working on his first word, and, you know, his and I, parents I bet, are, like... like he, he probably, he knows the words, right? But his, mm -hmm. um, like, vocal muscles aren't yet um, strong enough, and he can't pronounce things, you know, the way he can now. You know how it's different, depending on what language yeah. you learned growing up you know how you can pronounce certain things mm -hmm. so i bet that it's like it's hard for him he, he knows like every language but he can't like he can't physically <laughs> say it that that would suck his tongue and his lips and his like throat's not developed enough to like yeah. do that and it would also be funny because i think the first episode would be like him becoming a toddler you yeah. know so like the first episode you see him constantly you know failing to uh, do basic, like, normal human things, because he's got the mind of an adult, but the fine motor skills of a child. So, so he's just like... So he's I trying can... to do adult things, but, like, his he's just not able to, because his muscles suck. Yeah, his muscles suck, and his, he doesn't have coordination yet, and he's still working on it, and he's like, this is my least favorite part of the whole ordeal. Because there's, like, for that first two years, I'm absolutely fucking useless. You know, I get, I start, I can start talking usually around six months, but you know, I still haven't managed to stop them from circumcising me. I, I don't. Uh, want it'd be it. interesting if he goes back and forth on those first few months of life where he's mm -hmm. like, you know, I hate it because I can't do all the fun stuff, and then he's like, you know, it's actually kind of fun because you know, I, I don't really have to do anything. Yeah. I just have this woman that holds me all the time and like feeds me. Mm -hmm. I can just like poop in my pants, and someone else cleans it up. It's pretty great. Yeah, but then he's like, at, maybe it's like he's thinking that the first couple of weeks, and then but he gets after, tired of it. After like two months, he's like, ah, I just want to wipe my own ass, please. Every they're all so bad at it that it's always cold. Everything sucks. I want a bidet. You know, he's you know talking like he's bidet. Yeah, I want a bidet. What the fuck? You know. Okay. He's like, come on, man. So I am imagining Maxwell Sinclair as being a very loud, obnoxious, and foul-mouthed child. You know? Somebody who... All of the things that you think about now, like about all the dumb shit that teachers made you do, you know, in high school, or in elementary school. Not high school, in elementary school. And he's he, making fun of it. He is the one... He is, like, fully capable of telling the teachers exactly why it's stupid and useless and then also making them feel horrible by just like taking them down a few pegs with personal insults that it's like how does this six-year-old know that i can't please my wife or whatever and it's like I, I can see it in your eyes man i can see it in your eyes also she's sleeping with the principal well, yeah, like, I guess he knows all the secrets, you know? Yeah, The he stuff knows. that doesn't come out for till, until years later after all, you mm -hmm. know, high school or middle school or elementary school. He knows everything in the future that's going to happen and what's happening right now. Yeah, so I imagine, like, in one of his lifetimes, 
he used that information, he just bided his time until he was semi-cogent, and like, it would not it would be weird if he wasn't doing this stuff, you know, until he was like 12, and then he just started heavily investing in like, stocks, and like Apple, and Tesla, Bitcoin, yeah, like, and he's just like- Lifetime 3 or 2 is when he just got super rich because he knew everything. Yeah, and he's like, and he was like, oh, it got boring. It was fun for a while, but then it just got boring because I just got surrounded by all these creeps who just wanted my money. Kevin Spacey kept wanting to hang out with me. Not Does fun. he have like a, a companion or a friend or is it just him? We're getting to his companion. He does have a friend. His name is Stevie. He is basically just a normal child. Like just What's totally Stevie's normal. last name? Grossman. Nix? It, it's Stevie. Yes, it's Stevie Nix. Or maybe we could make uh, his friend like somebody who turns out to be famous later. That'd be funny. It's it's Stevo from Jackass. <laughs> it's it's Elon Musk. His name's his his best friend is Elon Musk, the nerd who constantly gets bullied in school. You know, because mm-hmm. that's that's why Max uh, gravitates towards Stevie, because he's like, Stevie's not gonna. T- He's not gonna rat me out because he doesn't have any friends, you know. Okay, so future tech billionaire Stevie. Stevie, yeah. And he's like, he invents yeah, like he... I don't know something cool. Like uh, he invents like actual, you know. Remember Google glasses, but they sucked. He invents mm-hmm. like the real Google glasses, okay. like ones that actually, you know, do cool stuff. Or maybe he invents something like he invented the air fryer, and he's like an absolute. He's, because everyone's got a fucking air fryer. I don't know if you've noticed this trend, but. Everybody has an air fryer, and everybody likes to talk about their air fryer. Like, oh, put anything in the air fryer, we'll make it better. Meh, 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 meh. And I think it would be funny if, like, in the regular timeline, Stevie didn't invent the time. In, like, the regular timeline, Stevie was a, like, TV repairman and never did anything impactful with yeah. his life. But because Max is there, and he's like, it would be, it'd be useful to have a really rich, powerful friend. You know? So he just influences him into like, yeah. you know, certain. <laughs> or careers. maybe he puts he puts a patent down for something in his name, you know, secretly, and just like, you know, make yeah. sure that Stevie's set for life. But that's that's later. In the first like, first episode, he's a baby. He's coming out. He's talking with his parents. They're like, "What the fuck is going on?" They're you know they think they're going insane. He's, you know, just like. Calm down. It's okay. It's okay. You're gonna get something. You're gonna get hit by a bus in, in two years. It's fine. What? His parents <laughs> die? No. It's just Can't kill his cr- parents. One maybe one loses an arm. What? I don't know. I'm trying to think of what what he could because I. How I think he would... just plays his. You know, he just plays an act for his parents because maybe one of his earlier lifetimes he, you know, told his parents the truth and it didn't go well. Yeah. So he like, just he just you know pretends to be a normal baby, and his parents yeah. just think they have a genius kid. Mm-hmm. That would be funny, but it, I think we could also constantly, throughout the show, flash back to these other timelines. Yes, I think that'd be fun. And, and it, it'd be like in one of the timelines he becomes like dictator of Earth. <laughs> And it's like, oh my god, he's fucking Doctor Doom or whatever. And that's just like that's that yeah, that was that was my that was a dark time. You know? Yeah, it got weird in that one. It got weird in that one. But uh Yeah, this one I I, uh, I won a Nobel Peace Prize. Or whatever. Yeah. This one I went to the Oscars. I got to, you know, waggle my ass at the whole of the Oscars. Which is admittedly what I would do if I was ever invited to the Oscars. Okay, I'll make sure you never get invited. If I win an Oscar, I have to be invited. I it for our um, for our movie that we write, I'll mm-hmm. accept the award for you. Oh, shit, uh, uh, just me. I'll be like Charlie couldn't make it, and you're like strapped down and in like uh, on a chair somewhere in the back yeah. of the auditorium. Like Clockwork Orange, you've got something holding my eyes open. Well, I'm I'm strapped down in a chair, having to watch you accept the speech. Because I be don't like, want you to, you know, <laughs> waggle your butt in front of everyone. 
Uh, yeah, and you'll be like, Charlie wishes he could be here, and he has such high respect for everyone in this room. He said he I'll loves like, everything. He loves the idea of the Oscars. I love everything about him. His favorite actor is Kevin Spacey. His favorite movie producer, Harvey Weinstein. A real a real treasure. That's yeah, what Charlie that's, wanted that's, me to say. Yeah, that's what he wanted. And you just ruined my, my, you know, my career in Hollywood that I don't have and probably will never have. That's okay. I'm okay with that. So would waggling my ass at the, at the uh, Oscars. Yeah, either way, it would be rude. Yeah, but Stevie is his friend who he meets in elementary school. You know, first day. Maxwell is like, I've been to this school before. I know the deal. I know what's going on. Hey, there's that kid who always got bullied and got kicked out of, and he leaves uh, school at sixth grade for being cyber bullied. Maybe he's like, he knows that. That's the future of Stevie. Yeah. If he doesn't Maybe do anything. Maybe Stevie's original life is extremely sad, so he leaves school. Um, yeah. Becomes a drug addict. He uh, makes a crazy cryptocurrency selling, and he makes a ton of money, but then he mm-hmm. loses it um, in a uh, in a marriage that he got into way too young um, yeah. to a girl that only got married to him for his uh, money, um, and he never was actually with. Uh, and then uh, he gets hit by a bus, uh, but survives, but loses like a leg and an arm. Um, but he still needs to pay for things, so he works at like, I don't know, fucking. He's a greeter at like a Walmart at, or something. Yeah, at Walmart. <laughs> yeah. And he's got like a pegged leg, and he has like a, you know, just like a nub for an arm. And then he, <laughs> he's got he what? gets he gets uh, after not smoking his entire life, he gets lung cancer, um, mm-hmm. and can't afford any treatment. And just dies in his apartment alone. <laughs> he gets lung cancer because not because he doesn't smoke, but because uh, his wife that left him smoked a, like two packs a day. <laughs> yeah, and just would constantly like <sighs> just blow the smoke at him. Mm-hmm. She's like, I, I want him to get cancer. I want him to die so I can have all the money. But then after a certain point, she's you know he catches her stooking the uh, tennis instructor and. I think it happens like really early. Like they get married and uh, mm-hmm. they get divorced the, like the day after, because oh, he be- walks. You know, they go to uh, the marital bed and she's already in it with like the waiter, and with, her, with with his brother. With his brother, yeah. And then she divorces yeah. him. It's not the other way around. Mm-hmm. Like he was gonna try to make it work. He's like, she we divorces still, him. We can still make it work. And she <laughs> somehow gets all the money, and then his mm-hmm. life goes downhill after that. Obviously. Yeah, and uh, she's she says i'm pregnant with your child and the court's like well it's you know got the same dna as your kid and it's like it's actually it's his brother's kid yeah <laughs> he's just paying for his brother's kid his entire life he's but like, he, he doesn't have any of the money from you know the she took all of his money so that's why he has to work yeah. at walmart and yeah he can't really even afford to live because he's just uh paying those child support payments mm-hmm. and then he's diagnosed with terminal lung cancer dies and that's the end. That's, yeah. that's the end of stevie and it's like he died at the age of like 20 and in life three uh maxwell sinclair like learns about this and like wow i gotta like help this guy out i gotta help that guy out next time maybe life two he like he meets him at a walmart like no, maybe is life one. one he meets him at a walmart mm-hmm. right so that this guy only has to go through this once life one he meets him like near the end of his life he meets him at a walmart and yeah. uh you know, he talks to him for a little bit, and then he goes to Walmart. You know, a couple days later, and asks about him, and then he's they find out he finds out he's dead, and he learns yeah. about his whole life, and it's like, wow, that guy's life sucks. It really did suck. And then second lifetime is when he becomes like dictator of Earth, and he makes but him he, his like general or something. He tries him. to make him his. He like tries to help him out, but like manages to just make his life worse. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. He, he like he be, he makes Stevie his uh, you know, apprentice or like his right hand man. Yeah, and he gets like, like martyred by like an uprising. Yeah, two two days before like the revolution happens, and you know, our uh, and Maxwell is overthrown, and like everyone in his cabinet is is hung, or whatever. <laughs> and like next time, Stevie, I'll get you next time, and like the third lifetime, he's like. 
hey Stevie, what's up? And Stevie's like, whoa, what the heck? And he's like freaked out because he's never met this kid before, but he knows his name, like he's they've been friends forever. He trips back and gets hit by a bus. It's like, shit. Next time. Next time, next time. I got you, Stevie. I got you. See you in 80 years or however long this lifetime is going to last. And they get struck by lightning. And maybe in the current version of the show, you could flash back to those. But there's like a finite amount of things that um, Maxwell can do to Stevie. Yeah. Because uh, most things that he does will lead to Stevie's life being awful. But there's only mm-hmm. a few things he can do that he's discovered over throughout his lives that will make his life good. Yeah. And so he he picks on he picks Stevie. Stevie's like, Stevie, my man, what's up? You and I. Friends till the end. Friends to the end and that sort of thing. And Stevie's like, um, okay. Uh sure. Uh whatever, man. And then I really wanna have some like bully payback stuff going on in this show because I think that'd be fun Okay. if you have like a kid come up to you come up to Stevie and Max and he's like what's up gaybos you two ladies kissing or whatever whatever I don't know I don't re- really remember how elementary school people insulted each other that sort of thing and then Maxwell just comes back with like your mom's cheating on your father with, you, with her brother just letting you know just letting you know nobody yeah that's they're getting divorced it's because of you they told me I know. And he just says things that are true about this kid's life, but there's no way for him to know. It's like, hey, I know. I know what you did last summer. I know what you did. Don't go near my fucking cat again, all right? Keep your hands to yourself, cat fucker. And and the kid's like... (laughs) And then every... And, you know, everyone just starts hearing the rumor that, you know, fifth grader... Bilson Bar- Birdo Birdo is a cat fucker and he's just ruined this kid's life and this, it's you know this, is a, this went a weird direction it's all but it's all weird directions or a, another idea I had was that because I'm imagining Maxwell is an absolute moral sinkhole like he's a terrible fucking person but he's six so there's only you know so bad of a person that you think a six-year-old could be but like this bully's picking on him and stevie he says something that like makes stevie cry or something like that and maxwell goes about engineering this kid's parents divorce you know just like through subtle manipulation and like just leaving clues around to like break into their house in the middle of the night and like plant evidence of things all over the place of like cheating and you know money laundering and all this stuff so that he engineers his parents divorce and then it's like yeah don't fuck with me guy this is me and he'll like say something to the bully so the bully knows that it was him but the bully could never express it Bill Botterson yeah. knows that Maxwell caused his parents divorce but no one's gonna believe him cause Bill Botterson's like 10 Max is like 6 it'd be funny if this is before the bullying even starts too <laughs> yes I hadn't thought about that like it doesn't yeah, start right. for another year but this uh-huh. kid he just gets revenge early mhm and then that's like we have maybe another a middle school elementary school episode where they're you know they're, they're Stevie and uh, Max they're you know becoming better friends maybe uh, Stevie gets a girlfriend or something like middle school girlfriend so not a real girlfriend but a middle school girlfriend and Maxwell is just like does not like the fact that she is taking away Stevie's time from him or maybe maybe it could be his future wife that divorces him they like first meet in middle school and Max, is, Max knows like she's nothing but bad news bro she's gonna get pregnant with your brother's uh, kid and Stevie's like I don't have a brother and then Max is like not yet and then he gets home that night and his parents tell him that like you have a brother mom's pregnant again or whatever 
and then Mac and then Stevie starts like picking up like how how did he know that because he's yeah. like he's not a kid he's not like eight or anymore he's like 12 you know he's starting to pick up some things about you know like some oddities about uh, Maxwell and so maybe yeah, he, at the he end knows of things before they happen yeah he knows things before they happen he's cruel he's not cruel he's mean and he's ruthless and he talks like an adult he doesn't talk like a kid you know he talks yeah. like a, a, an adult man who's very cynical and angry about the world because he's had to relive it a hundred fucking times or whatever and then you know third or fourth episode we're getting into high school and I think maybe that episode starts with like Stevie and Max being friends still but Stevie's quite suspicious of Max because Max has like known all this shit about him and is like yeah your brother's gonna have you know one blue eye and one green eye he's gonna have red hair and he's gonna be a left handed and you know that's all true or whatever and then Stevie's like what the fuck and they he finally confronts him about it and he's like alright listen Stevie it's between you and me I can read minds. He just completely fucking lies to him, yeah. like straight face lies. Like, I can read minds. All right, and you know uh, X Men. You know the X Men. I'm like Charles Xavier, except I'm not bald and I'm not in a wheelchair and I'm not British. I can read minds though, and he's just like, um, okay. And then maybe he's, he does something to prove that he can read minds, but it's just like, like I know for an in, for instance, you're thinking about the fact that I can't read minds right now. Yeah, it's something stupid he's like, like that. Damn! Whoa, he really can read minds. Whoa. Yeah. And uh, you know, they're getting into high school. They're getting into their classes. They're actually experiencing like real high school bullying, like swirlies and shit. That sort of thing. So maybe Maxwell is, is you know, he's working out a little bit more. He's trying to get big. He's trying to, you know, scare people off. But he still gets his ass kicked because, you know, he's a loudmouth douchebag. That's kind of his thing. He's loud, he's obnoxious, and he's right all the time. And that's that's really people hate the most is when, they're, when you're right all the time. I would know. Because I'm wrong all the time and people love me. Jake with no comment, and I think that's the best way he could have done it. There's no way, there's nothing he could say that wouldn't hurt my feelings. <laughs> um, so do you, have, do you have something after high school, or what's going next? Uh, well, I think the series ends with them going to, the, like, the final... I want the series to end, like, the ending of every coming-of-age story, you know? Where they're going to the big dance, and they've got to get dates, or they've got to get, like, you know, booze or something. Like, super bad. They're trying to, like, get these girls who go with them to the date, to the dance, and they have to figure it out, and, like... They're like, oh, we'll only go with you if you get us beer or whatever. And Max has to, like, come up with a way to, like, steal someone's ID and look the same as that person. Maybe he's like, all right, you're not going to believe me, but at one point in my life, I was a makeup artist. Like, I, you know, I did a lot of makeup. <laughs> so he dresses Stevie up like an old woman. Yeah. And it's like, all right, you're going to go in, you're going to ask for, uh, uh, I don't know, think of a beer, 24 pack of Bud Light. That's what teenagers drink, right? Something like that. Miller Light. We'll get Miller Light. We'll get sponsored by Miller Light. It'll be great. Yeah, you should definitely get, get a beer sponsor that pays you to be on it. We the uh, official we'll get... beer of underage drinking. We'll get a Corona sponsorship like James Bond. James Bond Great. didn't have a Corona sponsorship. That's Fast and Furious. Oh, shit. Yeah, you're right. Fast and Furious. <laughs> Very different. This, I'm, well, I feel like Fast and Furious is basically just American James Bond. James Bond's like, 
I mean, at least it used to be more spy stuff. Fast and Furious is just straight up action movie. Yeah, but there's also spy stuff. American James Bond is Mission Impossible also. Oh yeah, you're right. It is. Or, I mean, Jason Bourne, but Jason Bourne's not that good, is it? The first one's really good. The first one is really good. Mission Impossible is actually good, unlike most James Bond movies. Mm Mm-hmm. Ooh, shots fired. Daniel Craig's gonna come in. No, I like I like Daniel Craig. Oh yeah. I said most. You're coming over here. He's gonna come. He's gonna meet you at the airport. He's gonna kick your ass. Yep. Yes. Bro, he's he's gonna beat you up. He's really big. I stand by it. You know. And then they got like a billion different James Bonds, but we only have one Tom Cruise. I mean, he's got some issues, but like, you know, at least he's the guy in the movies does all the stunts. He's. He's mostly issues, isn't if, he? If he was just uh, Mission Impossible Tom Cruise, you know, like a movie actor mm-hmm. Tom Cruise, not Scientology and like other problems Tom Cruise, he'd be pretty awesome. Yeah, he would be. Also, the fact that he, his, the, everything about Tom Cruise besides his movies is very weird. Uh, did you know that he married and divorced women when they were the exact same age? All of them. Uh, like yeah, married, that's Katie weird. Holmes I, I think it's probably some weird Scientology rule that, like, by this age, they have to be, you know, in or something like that. That's my guess. But I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, back to your show. Yeah, back to the show. Uh, you know, he's, maybe he's dressing him up like an old woman to go get uh, Coronas, and uh, the guy doesn't buy it. So, like, uh, Maxwell has to, like, sneak in while he's getting, like, told off by the guy or, like, the bar keep is calling the cops bar keep. as barkeep yeah whatever the liquor store man is calling the cops and like uh max just like hits him in the back of the head with something heavy just knocks him out he's like shit and he like he goes in and he hacks into their security system to delete the photos and hacks in it's like you mean goes up to yeah, the terminal like, clicks on security camera you know <laughs> deletes footage no, he hacks in. And Stevie's like, how the fuck can you hack? Yeah, I've gone to literally every class with you and spent most of my time with you every day for the last 14 years. I've never seen you even practice computer stuff at all. How do you know how to do that? And he's like, you want the truth, Stevie? You want the fucking truth? And Stevie's like, I think I I earn, I think I deserve it. And he says, I'm actually 250 years old. I just I have the body of a child. It's fine. It's okay. It's cool. I'm not gonna be anything. I'm not gonna do anything creepy. But I have the body of a 16 year old and the mind of a. Yeah, does that? If he man. dates a girl, that's his age. Yeah. I think he is just like I listen, mate. I'm not going near that shit with a ten foot pole. I just um I'm fine. I'll wait. You wait till I'll he's, wait till yeah. I'm eighteen. Eighteen. I'm wait. I'll wait. Okay. It's fine. I don't want to put any ladies in that situation. I'm not gonna put myself in that situation. No way. But yeah, and then uh, I think they go to the party. They're again confronted by somebody who's been picking on them for the whole series or well their whole high school careers, and. You know, uh, Maxwell finally gives him like the huge talking down to in front of the whole class, or he reveals some big embarrassing secret like, hey, you shit your pants every day in math class after we ate lunch, and no one ever called you out on it. Well, I am. You never wash your hands after you use the toilet. Something, something dumb like that, and everyone's like, ugh. Ew, I don't want to talk to this guy anymore. Yeah. He doesn't eat. He uses that he wipes and then he doesn't wash his hands. What kind of fucking monster does that? You know. And there's just like this climactic high school... High school thing. You know, it's all very high school-esque. But uh, Maxwell is just completely over it at this point. He's like, I'm fucking done with this shit, alright? I know. I know you're big and strong and everyone likes you in high school. Well, guess what? When you're 30, you're gonna get hit by a bus. Congratulations. You wanna wanna know something else? (laughs) When you're 35, you're gonna lose sight in one of your eyes. And then, you know what's gonna happen when you're 32? You're gonna lose one of your balls also. So shut up. 
I think it'd be funny if it was like the, you know, the football guy. Um, mm-hmm. And he's like telling him like, all right, you think you're so special because you got recruited by this, you know, division one school. Well, guess what? You're going to get there. You're going to be put on the practice squad. Um, you're going to get injured your first day of training. Um, and then you're going to get addicted to uh, opioids um, and you're going to be kicked off the team and you're going to go to jail for 10 years because we got some crazy opioid laws right now. But then you'll get out five years early because we changed the laws. Um and then afterwards, and then you, you won't be able to get a job, job because you know you're you're uh, a criminal. Um, and so, yeah. And then you you're just gonna have to move in back with mommy and daddy in the yep. fucking basement. And you got all these high school your- football photos up because you're still chasing that high of being a, a football quarterback. You're gonna be thinking about having sex with a 16 year old every day until you're 40 fucking five. You creep. All right. You're going to go to every high school football game and cheer. And people are going to talk to me like, oh, yeah, he used to be one of our quarterbacks. I'm like, what happened to him? Ah, uh, you know, went downhill. Drugs. Drugs. Nothing but downhill. When you're 75, you'll get a job as the high school football coach. Um, mm-hmm. And you'll get a and heart attack the get... next day in the locker room when you're giving your first speech. You're... You're going to get fired three weeks after that for coming on to one of the highest seniors. So shut up, you creep. Don't hit on teenagers. Fucking monster. And he's just like, okay, wh- whatever. Whatever. I'm done with this. And Maxwell, we, we all, he's like, like, I'm no, done with The this. guy like walks out, the football guy. And he's like, wow, that guy was so stupid. Mm-hmm. Well, no, that's going to happen. Flash forward like 60 mm-hmm. years. Um... You know, he's he's like seventy five, he just got fired from the team. He's like and then he has like a he's like he was right. Everything. He was right about everything. Yeah, maybe and then he goes to the bar and you know, sits down at the bar and is like, Could I get a beer, please? And then Maxwell's sitting there. He looks really like good, you know? Like he's taking care of himself. Yeah. This lifetime he decided to be like a really productive, healthy, happy person. So he's like, you know, he looks really good, healthy. He's got like a supermodel uh, girlfriend or something, and he's like, "Oh, hey, so how'd the job interview go?" And he's just like an absolute, you know, snarky dick to him. And then that our football guy remembers. He remembers like that conversation. He's like, "How? How did you know?" Like, I can read minds. Cut. Cut back, back to, to yeah. Stevie. Stevie and Maxwell are, you know, walking out of the party. Maxwell's really pissed off. Stevie's kind of angry at Maxwell because, you know, Stevie has had to spend all of high school with this basically adult man who's a, who's in a high schooler's body. You know, so he never really got to experience that much high school stuff. You know, he was like, "Come on, man. We just, just we can go to one high school party without you." Amadeus, like, fucking reading people's minds or telling them their future or whatever, right? Or we can go to one high school party without you being, like, a, a rampant asshole about everything, right? And it's like, yeah, sure. You know, that maybe that was the, the promise he made and he couldn't keep it. And so, <clears throat> you know, Frankie and, and Maxwell, they have this big, like, fight, you know? He's like, I saved you, man. You know where you'd be without me? You'd be in a fucking gutter, man. And then Max, and then Stevie's like, I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. We're in high school. Yeah. What do you mean I'd be in a gutter? What? It's, shut up. I'm out of here. I'm done. No, I'm not talking to you. No, no. Done. You know, they're done being friends. And they, you know, go their separate ways. Cut to five years later. Stevie is, you know, he's, he's working in the Walmart. He's greeting people. He's got his peg leg. But he's got both of his arms. He still has that peg leg. Like. Okay. <laughs> and they're and they're like, and the, you know, Maxwell walks into the apartment. He walks into the, the Walmart. Uh, Walmart, and it's like, hey, hey, Stephen, have you been, buddy? And Stephen looks up at him and is like, Max, yeah, what's up? How'd you lose that leg, by the way? I mean. You can't buy a bus like uh, last time? No, I just I had diabetes. I had diabetes. But, you know, I'm working. I'm happy. I'm married. 
uh, to the love of my life. And it's like, and then Max is like, oh god, please don't let it be her, don't let it be her, don't let it be her. He shows her, shows him the picture, and it's, you know, he's got a beautiful wife and two kids, it's not her. It's like, he's actually happy. Yeah. He's he's working as a Walmart greeter, but, he's just you doing know, it for fun. he's happy. He's enjoying life. He made he made some good investments as a kid. He's just it, as a younger man. And he's just like you know. Uh, I'm uh, and and maybe Max realizes maybe the uh, the you know, you don't need to know everything. You don't need to no. be sure of exactly where you're going to be. You know, sometimes just living life without a without a plan is is, is the only way you can live it, man. Wow. What a morally sound story you have for us. I'm gonna shed a tear at the ending. Thank you. But yeah, that that's my that's my show, Old Soul. No, that was that was about it. And then we we could probably do another season where he's an adult man and he's, you know, going on red. You have like a vastly different see, uh, show. Yeah. Because you could have your coming of age story comedy, mm-hmm. and then you could have like an action you know, adventure. I think where it, you could have like a spy show cool. or something. I don't know. You could just do different yeah. things every time with the same character. I think it would be cool if you had like, you know, he's thirty now, but he's got the mind of like, he's maybe it's been a few hundred uh, years in his mind since the last season. Yeah. Excuse me. And he's relived a bunch of. He's lived through a bunch more lifetimes and like. The next second season, Old Soul, Volume Two, he's like a spy, you know, working in espionage, like international espionage, yeah. like traveling around the world, and maybe he's like talking with mystics, and he spent like he spent one of his lifetimes just wandering around like different parts of like the mystical world, like the Himalayan mountains, you know, going to see monks and like wise men of the universe or of the world, planet trying to figure out why the fuck he can't die that would you know? be the best way to end the show is to figure out why he can't die you know have like a big adventure where he's like going around the world trying yeah. to figure it out mm-hmm. and maybe that's like he's you know working for the american government because you know he's got this deal going like you know how rick and morty rick is like just considered as like a entirely different like a different entity to everyone else in the world and that by the US government so they have a weird like sort of peace treaty uh, you yeah. know like I think that it'd be something similar like that like you know Maxwell knows things about the US government about history about current politicians and you know that no one could possibly know like he knows these things, and it's like, how does he know it? We don't know. But if he decides to start talking, uh, we are all going to be fucked. And so instead of making him into an enemy, they're like, all right, we're recruiting you as one of our special agents. He's like, he's part of the Black Widow program, maybe. No, that'd be basically like in Russia then. He's yeah, in he's, the in a, he's in the spandex. Yeah, he's in Red Room. He's in the comic book Red Room, which I've been reading. It has nothing to do with the red that. Room, yeah. But, uh... No, no, it, I know room. what you're talking about, but it has nothing to do with the Red Room from Black Widow. No, I haven't seen Black Widow. Is it good? Uh, it's okay. And then maybe one of it's his... Fun. Like, yeah, it, I, I've heard that it was fun. <laughs> you one, were going to say, yeah, it is, when you haven't seen the movie. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh. It's so fun when, uh... Black Widow... I bet you haven't even seen Shang-Chi either. I haven't, I haven't seen Shang-Chi. He's a second-rate Marvel fan. <laughs> I'm not even a Marvel fan. Yeah, sure. But that's my show, Old Soul. Maybe we, maybe next next time I'll do Season 2, and it'll be entirely different. Uh, don't, are we allowed to do that? Can we pitch the second season of our show as we, a show? Well, I don't see why not. I think usually we get through to... Uh, like. The, usually I do like all the seasons and <laughs> yeah, know, how it ends at the end. Yeah. I'd have to look through and see where I haven't done that. But, uh, you know. Yeah, that's, that's well, my show. Fun. I enjoyed it. I might have to change my thumbnail. Um, I, I like I'd probably cut this out, but uh, I... I made the thumbnail before he told me the pitch. He mm-hmm. just gave me the genre and the name of it mm-hmm. to see if it was similar. 
and uh, it wasn't. No, no, I mean, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't similar. You told me action, adventure, comedy, and this was a coming-of-age story. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Just saying. I said immortal comedy. You said immortal action comedy. I thought there'd be more action. Oh, shit. There's no action. It's a coming-of-age story. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I misappropriated my own show. I'll change it now and forever. You should be sorry. All right, send us out. Okay, well, thank you everyone for listening to the Very Reasonable Pilots Podcast. I've been your host, Charles Long, with me as always has been my co-host, editor, producer, co-pilot, and gunner, Jacob Gloth. If you like what you heard here and you want to hear more, you can find us on anywhere that podcasts are sold except for Stitcher. And you can find us on YouTube. If you're on YouTube, please give us a like and a subscribe. Tell a friend, tell a family member, tell an enemy, for all I care. And have a beautiful day. Goodbye. Bye.